Okay, bring on the rip-offs. Welcome to a world of jumbled CG, rambling disjointed dialogue, and stories that would be an insult to the legally insane. Welcome to the nightmare that is Mockbusters. Many cartoons will pay homage to an original piece of animation, like follow-ups from Toy Story. Then there's just these 20 cent budget imitation rip-offs that shamelessly attempt to capitalize on the well-intentioned grandma. So let's check out the top 10 worst animated mockbusters. We'll revisit some old animation, as well as checking out some new animation. Also, halfway through making the video, I noticed that another channel had already covered this list recently. I was thinking of cancelling production, but decided that, hopefully, my list can at least offer a bit of a different perspective. Anyway, on to the countdown for number 10. The Little Panda Fighter. They're ripping off Kung Fu Panda. My advisor said you might not know what movie it's ripping off. That advisor is now fired. This one was produced by the notorious Video Brinquedo, an evil Brazilian direct-to-DVD company intent on swindling every grandma in the bingo studio. Where to start with Panda Fighter? We have music that sounds more like a piano being smashed with a sledgehammer than it does a coherent tune. And of course, lip syncing was never even considered for a second. Screw timing it, right? Just slam that Kung Fu Panda lookalike out before Grandma puts her specs on. Little Panda Fighter stars the moldy heaping blob of CG, known as Pancada. And in order for the creator to show off his ability to use the Photoshop filters, Pan Carter turns his dojo into a disco. All the faces look very uncanny and strange in this one frozen expression, because most of the time they couldn't be bothered to animate a face different than about to pass gas in the Vatican. The only plus? The English dub tried desperately to save this flaming car heap by giving a performance that wouldn't make your gut wrench. Oh, sorry, Mr. Polaris. I guess they must have drifted off for a sec. But this is one car heap that had to be left to smolder. And coming in at number nine, what's up? Okay, take a guess what this one is ripping off. Coincidentally enough, it was produced the same year as Up. Almost as though it might have got a little inspiration from it. What a surprise. It's from our old friends Video Brinquedo. Another amazing coincidence. It is my belief that Brinquedo never actually expected anyone to watch this. They just figured they'd throw a bunch of discombobulated CG together, assuming that everyone would get to the DVD menu, realize their horrible mistake, and throw the DVD into the fire. Half the time, What's Up doesn't even bother with moving characters or animation. It's filled with these long, awkward moments of complete silence. Young lady in our city, Amanda. It's like the voice actors stop to lament their life decisions while reading the script. The dialogue seems to have been written out in 10 minutes by someone with a very distant grasp on the English language. Our starring voice cast include Michelle Gabriel, who starred in Comrades and What's Up, the movie we're currently watching. And that's it. That is literally the only actor listed for this movie. My guess is that anyone else involved in this project demanded to have their identities kept secret for fear of never working again. I heard the voice actor for Eggman in there too, but I'm guessing I did permanent damage to his career just by stating that. Unless you're planning on using it as a paperweight, leave what's up lying in the bargain bin for all eternity. And for number eight, Kiara the Brave. Welcome to the Dream Zone. This hideous abomination of the animation universe is brought to you by Smita Maru from Mumbai. Now when you see this, you may think you're looking up the nose of your local car wash guy, but it actually turns out we're looking at Kiara the Brave's eyesore of a city and her modernly dressed people, despite being set in the medieval times. And the wizard has a laptop because don't all wizards have a laptop? I don't blame the animators or voice actors, they're probably fresh out of school, desperate for a first project. But these characters really are some of the most misshapen dregs of animation I've ever seen. The characters 
jump and chop around the screen, like Vanellope somehow glitched their animation software. Occasionally when the seven planets align, the lip syncing will almost match what was originally said. Kiara is plastered all over the advertising, but she doesn't actually seem to have that many appearances in the movie. Almost as though they were just capitalizing on another franchise. Duh. Surely never. They even rip off Jesus too. That's just... Wow, I, I guess sticking Jesus on your movie would allow more brand recognition? I could never tell with Kiara the Brave if I'm looking at a broken CRT monitor or just a really ugly China doll. Either way, these things are going to haunt my nightmares for weeks. And the seventh worst animated mockbuster is... Leo Lion, King of the Jungle. Fresh from the streets of South Korea comes... Jetlag Productions, and they're here to give us the most repugnant defacing of the Lion King we can imagine. Jetlag Productions also brings us such classics as Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, Snow White, Hercules, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, Jeebus, they're, they've really got this formula down pat, don't they? They just recreate the box cover for every single popular Disney movie, and then put something resembling a cartoon inside it. After all, once they're playing it, they've obviously already bought it. So who cares? You remember that endless assault on your senses that was Felix the Cat the movie? Well, this new middle finger to the cartoon industry rivals even Felix the Cat. The visuals are so lazy and unpleasant to look at, that watching paint dry will suddenly seem like a refreshing, thrilling experience. If you must touch this deformed Lion King lookalike, do it with a 10-foot pole. And coming in at number 6, Jungle Book, by our old friends Jetlag Productions. This is Jungle Book, in the most insulting sense of the word possible. I'm just gonna call it Jetlag Jungle Book, because the most entertaining part about this movie is the name of the company that made it. It kind of gives me the comforting thought of flying away from bad movies like this. <laughs> is that meant to be Mowgli? He looks like he's been possessed by a bizarre alien body snatcher. There's little to say about this one. Jetlag Jungle Book is essentially the I can't believe it's not Jungle Book that was universally banned as a visual poison by the FDA. And just to kick me twice in the nads, they make these poor voice actors sing their broken scripts out to assure that every child was screaming at their TV to stop. There's just nothing to say about the plot. You know who Mowgli's vaguely meant to be, as well as Baloo and Bragira. Go watch Disney's Jungle Book or the live-action remake. But by all means, do not watch Jetlag Jungle Book. And the fifth worst animated mockbuster is... The Frog Princess. Made by, you guessed it, Brinquedo. Oh no, they reversed the two words in the title. You mean this... Isn't Princess and the Frog? How do they keep fooling me like this? The Frog Princess somehow manages to be among the most bland of the mockbusters, with our entire 40-minute story taking place in two rooms, as our highly shallow, dead-eyed princess quarrels with a king and a frog for 40 minutes. You don't need to be afraid, my lady. There really is nothing else to the story. Their expressions, or posture, or animation, don't actually change. We have two voice actors for this movie. One lady and, once again, four kids Eggman. Sorry, man. Now please prepare yourself to meet Prince Ziriguidum. The two scenes for the Frog Princess seem to include the princess in her room and in the dining room. We never actually see outside the castle, but I suspect we're not missing out on that much. And for number four, Little Princess School. What do you say to a movie that can't even be bothered to animate a flag flickering for more than two frames? Little Princess School attempts to capitalize on, what else? The Disney princess market. All of the princesses go to princess school so they can learn to be beautiful. That doesn't even make legitimate sense in a sentence. If your third grade teacher heard you using that kind of grammar, you get a severe talking to after class. 
produced by Morningstar Entertainment. I'd like to once again say that the most fascinating parts of these movies are the bizarre names of the companies churning them out. This time the creators just said, screw it. Maybe if we stick something resembling the princesses in one movie, surely someone's bound to mistake one of them for the real thing. I think even the criminally insane could term the difference between this Disney princess and the flat-faced garbage pale imitation princesses we have here. Like all good broken mockbusters, the animation just stutters about, and the voice acting seems to be in a completely different universe to the actual animation occurring. Look, even the stones are running away from us. <laughs> there must be some kind of windstorm. Oh. What am I even watching? It's even a bad message, mostly about the princess's strange, foreign, awkward alien methods to get guys to kiss them. You're right. It's strange. Does the demographic for Little Princess School even know what a kiss is? I'm not quite convinced the writers knew what a kiss was. In a one horse open sleigh, or the fields we go. Oh, come on. Or the fields we go? They can't even get the song lyrics for Jingle Bells right? Freaking Jingle Bells? That's on par with botching up Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. Okay, we've been subjected to enough. I swear, I'll never complain about Disney stereotyping princesses again. And the third worst animated mockbuster is... An Ant's Life by UAV Corporation. Uh-oh, they changed the word bug from ant. This is... A really bad hair day for Flick. I thought jet lag productions was bad, but I had yet to witness the horror that was the dreaded UAV Corporation. I'm Josephine. Thankfully, an ant's life is mercifully short. At only 25 minutes, the creators were gracious enough to not turn their demented eye torture into a full length film. In fact, the original DVD was so horribly awful that they didn't even feel confident selling it on its own. It was packaged with a bunch of Warner Brothers cartoons because they knew they should be paying you to see this movie. And... Diddy. Bang. Bang. What even is this? Am I watching weird CG ant sex? And every colour is washed out like you're looking at a nuclear waste site. Real bugs are prettier than this. If you want to get out the door and out of your house, an ant's life is the movie to do it. You'll be so desperate to leave your house, you'll be tearing down your door and sprinting down the road in maddening terror. And the second worst animated mockbuster is... Ratatoing. Bring Quedo is back. And they bring us their darkest. Worst creation of all time. But I've mentioned Ratatouille before in worst animated movies, so I'll be brief. But there really is just something uniquely awful about Ratatouille that separates it from all the rest. Its dialogue sounds more like a long, boring tutorial teaching foreigners how to form basic, coherent English sentences. The lips will flicker along from frame to frame, in no way attempting to actually match the voices. Characters will randomly glitch up on screen and jump from one place to another. And it just goes on and on. Completely irrelevant, uninteresting restaurant banter is just basically continued for half the movie. And why? Why did they give the rats lady parts and make them wink to the camera? Was the creator trying to inspire rat cosplay? There is zero structure to Ratatouille. We jump from one scene to the next, and it wasn't until I looked up a synopsis on the internet that I actually figured out what was going on. I will never understand why my favorite anime English voice actors chose to take part in this. I know English dubbers are poorly paid, but surely it would do them more harm than good to have this movie on their resume. Ratatouille. And before we get to number one, I'd like to do some quick dishonorable mentions. Wings, a wonderful family movie that all ages will enjoy. Stated by the blind deaf hobo from down the road we paid a hamburger. Little and Big Monsters. Oh, Morningstar Entertainment. Ripping off Monsters vs. Aliens now? Whatever will we do with you? Tappy Toes. At least they bothered to change two words of the title in this one. A fish tale. Actually, except for the title, it was actually really good. 
The animation reminded me of the Iron Giant. Well paced, well voice acted, I actually really enjoyed it. Chopkick Panda. Strangely enough, this was probably the best mockbuster I saw, with a likeable cast and pleasant voice acting. Even the animation is pretty smooth and pleasing. And the dialogue is kind of clever at times, so it certainly couldn't quite make the list. Frozen Land. No, no they didn't. No freaking way did they get away with this. Oh, wait, yeah. Actually, they didn't get away with this one. Braver. They took Brave, and they added an R. Brilliant. Give that man a million dollars. And with those said, here we go. And the number one worst animated mockbuster is... A Car's Life. It is among the worst animated movies, and I think it is THE worst animated mockbuster of all time. Welcome to the bottommost rung of our ladder into the pile of crap that is mockbusters. A place where voice acting is a momentary afterthought of verbal exclamations. <coughs> all colours resemble bodily fluids, and the animation is traumatisingly bad enough to make Samurai Seppuku seem like a viable option. Welcome to A Car's Life. A Car's Life was made by one guy, most likely in a sweatshop while he was drunk. And notably, he was so ashamed of this Cars mockbuster that it is nearly impossible to find a single trace of Sparkplug Productions on the net. There really is no grasp of character personality, stories, stakes, or even a basic grasp of the English language in this animation black hole. Uh-oh, it's getting late. I know it's the middle of the day, but I could only be bothered to animate one frame in the sky. There is one music soundtrack. Just one. It's about 10 seconds long, and it is just awful. And A Car's Life contains a voice so ear-piercing, so wretched, that it actually gives Fred and Annoying Orange a run for their money. They're still worse, but this voice is a close second. Because a car is a little different doesn't mean oh. a car. Could we not have possibly done, I don't know, two takes? But then, the evil villains very slowly approach them. Then they slowly start to lower their cranes on top of them. Our heroes could, of course, I don't know, move away from them? But I guess a 10 cent animation budget had run out by this point, so our heroes are doomed. Yay! We get to watch this pink abomination of nature cut to pieces. Though, as if to give one final middle finger to the director, even her death cries sounded unconvincing. <coughs> a car's life is the most disastrous dump on an already bad movie I've ever seen. Oddly enough though, I actually kind of recommend it. It's only 40 minutes, but it truly has to be seen to be believed. I recommend you check it out with a friend and have a few quick laughs. We used to get these mockbusters a lot back in the day, but I think it's important to clarify, every single one of these studios went bankrupt. The odd thing is that a lot of these movies didn't fool grandmas. And besides, these mockbusters show just how high our standards for animation are nowadays. Many of us are trying harder than ever to give the next generation the best cartoons possible, and I think that really shows. Do you think I missed a bad animated mockbuster? If you have an opinion, feel free to leave it in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.